All right, continuing our discussion of polar coordinates, one distinction between polar coordinates and rectangular coordinates is that rectangular coordinates are unique. So, and what I mean by that is there's only one way to label this point here. Here's the point uh, 3, 4. That has one name, 3, 4. I can't name that in any other way in the rectangular coordinate system. But there are an infinite number of ways to label this point, for instance, 3 pi over 3. In other words, I can call that point 3 pi over 3, but another name for that point is, if I want to view it as uh, the rotation as being a negative angle, what I could do is say, okay, rotate, let's rotate, um, let's rotate here, Right now, if I rotate there, I'm facing in that direction, and I would walk out. Now, I wouldn't walk out three, because again, I want to get to this point here. If I rotate that that angle, that angle would be what? It would be four pi over three, right? Because it would be it would be thirty degrees short of two seventy, so it would be two forty degrees, and that's four pi over three. So I could rotate 4 pi over 3, um, but I'd have to walk backwards 3 steps to actually get to this point. So another name for this point is negative 3, 4 pi over 3. So again, remember that you can, you can uh, think about walking forward, you know, rotating and walking forward, or rotating in sort of the opposite direction you want to go, but then walk backwards. It's another way to label that point. What we're asked to do here is um, find all polar coordinates for P. In other words, we need to write an expression that represents all polar coordinates. And so to do that, we're going to break it up into all the ones that have a positive R. So R is positive. That'll be these guys here. And then we'll do all the ones where R is negative. So if R is positive, you'd be walking out 3. If it's negative, you'll be walking backwards 3. So the best way to do it is, first of all, notice that 3 comma pi over 3 is one possible coordinate. And then to get another one, I could just, rather than rotate pi over 3 or 60 degrees, couldn't I just rotate that plus an extra 360 degrees, or in other words, an extra 2 pi radians? Right, so I could just go pi over 3 plus 2 pi radians. That will get me to the facing in the same direction. But I could also walk, uh, I could rotate in the other direction 2 pi. I could rotate 4 pi after I get to pi over 3. So as we've seen before, multiples of 2 pi, so long as you're in there as an integer. That's all the positive versions. All the negative ones, well, I'd have to make it set it up so I'm facing in this direction. So I'm facing in this direction. Oops, sorry. Right, all the angles that I'm facing in this, in which I'm facing in this direction, but then I walk backwards three. So we already know one. Rotating four pi over three, and walking backwards three will get me to the point P, and of course as in the previous case, if I just rotate another 2 pi radians, and now this diagram is getting ridiculous, but if I just rotate another 2 pi radians, I'll be facing the same direction, and then walking backwards 3 would again bring me to that point. So, multiples of 2 pi. And so what we've done here is, that's a horrible looking z, what we've done here is just describe all the possible ways to name that point in polar form. So notice there are infinite, right? So these are the answers to that question. So notice there's an infinite number of ways to label a point in polar form. There's only one way to label it in rectangular form. And this actually has some advantages which we'll probably uh, see later on.